Talking about suicide is difficult and distressing for most of us, but a Cumbrian man is urging people to open up and speak more freely after one of his children took her own life. Andy Airy's daughter, Sophie, was just 29 when she killed herself just before Christmas. But now he's raising money for the suicide prevention charity Papyrus, and he'll take Sophie's place in the Northumberland Half Marathon next month to help promote awareness. Alison Freeman's been talking to Andy at his home in the Eden Valley. Soph was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. A smile just lit up a room. You know, I think of her walking through the door, hiya! Um, and just, she was so pleased to see her. Uh, she brought so much love and happiness uh, and a great deal of fun into so many people's lives. Andy's daughter Sophie had just turned 29. She worked as a nurse in Edinburgh. She'd made some really bad decisions in her personal life, but haven't we all? She was a bit low moodish, but nothing out of the ordinary, nothing that would flag it up to say we need to be especially worried here. Uh, things were happening very positively, new flat, new job. You know, it was really, it was a, looked like a really positive time. At uh, 13 minutes past seven, on December the 19th, we got a, a message in our what family WhatsApp group, which said, uh, I love you all very much, and with a couple of kisses. And we, I looked at that, and we looked at each other, and uh, that's not right. So I phoned her, and it just went straight to, to voicemail. We found Sol's car within 10 minutes of the texts going, uh, but she wasn't there, she'd gone. Sophie's body was found in South Queens Ferry three days later. The shock and the, the kind of horror of what you feel, it's so raw, so raw. You know, the pain, the pain is, uh, an anguish is, is just it's impossible to believe. Sophie's funeral was held on the 15th of January. Sophie was due to run the Northumberland Half Marathon on the 23rd of February. Andy has decided to take her place. The thought of actually running using Sophie's entry is, is incredibly um, uh, uplifting almost. It, it does feel as though I'll be running with her. Oh, she's, she's running with me. And I thought, well, actually, I could do something with this, um, something positive. Because if you don't pick the positives out of such a traumatic and awful situation, you can get dragged down. Andy is running for the charity Papyrus, which aims to prevent suicide in young people. Suicide is the biggest killer of people under the age of 35. And you don't know it. So I just thought, yes, I'll, I'll raise money and it'll point people at the Just Giving page, which would be great, but that will get the message that Papyrus exists as an organisation and give people um, an extra tool if they, they come across people who are feeling suicidal or they're worried about friends and family. So that's what we're trying to do, get the message out there. And Alison joins me in the studio now. So Andy's raising money for Papyrus, Alison, the prevention, uh, suicide prevention charity, but this story's about more than that, isn't it? Yes, I mean, Obviously, the amazing £12,000 that he's already been sponsored for this run are going to help Papyrus in a tangible way. It will fund the helpline and therefore save lives. But equally, the charity is saying to us, if you can get someone like Andy to speak frankly about what's happened to him and his family, then you're breaking the stigma around it. And if people speak more openly about suicide and suicidal thoughts, again, you are going to save lives. Hazel Russell is from the charity, and she told me why people shouldn't be afraid to talk about it. The biggest myth is that if you ask a young person about suicide, you're giving them the idea to do that. And that's completely the opposite of that is true. There's been huge steps uh, forward in recent years in talking about mental health, um, but not enough about suicide prevention. And we have to talk about that. We have to enable our young people to talk about it. But just as importantly, we have to enable all our old people to be able to respond to that appropriately and not just shut them down.